Okay. So today, what we are uh, like going to discuss is about uh, a nonlinear space, which is called C one zero one. So C one zero one is generally a space of continuously differentiable functions. Okay, one means first term differentiable, and of course, after uh, the differentiation, that function uh, what we get basically f dash should be continuous. Okay, other than it will be excluded from this uh, space of C one zero one. And uh, there is a norm. Of course, we know that uh, the beautiful norm is basically called the supremum norm. Uh, which is basically applied to C01, the space of all continuous functions, and where uh, C01 with that subnorm is ba basically equipped with that subnorm, it generates a banach space, means complete nonlinear space. Okay, but we want to check that if uh, that uh, that supremum norm is generally forms a complete nonlinear space, or whether the norm is basically complete on C101. That's what we want to check. So the space we talk about today is C101. Okay, with the sub norm. Okay, so sub norm means let's say that this is the norm. So sub norm generally defined by this way that supremum of uh, f x and x belongs to zero one. Okay, so that's what it is. So C one means as I said continuous differentiable function. So what do you do? We basically take a quasi sequence uh, in C one zero one, uh, which are of course continuous differentiable functions, and then we see that this function basically. Uh, goes to a goes to a function, uh, goes to a function which belongs to if we doesn't belongs to C one zero one means it is uh, the out of this space. Okay, means it goes out of this space. So this space is not closed. So that's what it is. So we take this kind of sequence. So let us take this f x root over of uh, t square. Just let put t t square plus one by a. <coughs> okay. So this is the function we we are uh, basically working with today. That uh, square root of t square plus one by n, and where it is t, and t belongs to as usual it's zero one, and we see that every f and t is uh, generally differentiable functions, and after differentiable it is maybe continuous. Okay, it's generally continuous. Now we take uh, the limit function. Okay, we take the limit function. So if you take the limit function, let's say this is f x. So what is f x? F x is basically mod t. Okay, so f t actually. So f t basically mod t. Okay. And what t belongs to zero one. Now we see that like this, that f t minus f n t. If you take this thing, means uh, the supremum of this is uh, like generally this uh, root of, of uh, t square minus one by n minus t. And if you take this, the supremum. Okay, if you take the supremum of this, is generally zero as n tends to infinity. So if you just n tends to infinity. Then what will happen? That this becomes uh, mod t. So mod t minus mod t is basically zero. That's what it is. So it generally converges to this f t. But the problem is that you can see this f t is basically mod t. And if you just draw the graph of mod t like this, so the graph of mod t is like this. So at this point zero, uh, this function is not differentiable. Okay. So that is uh, where the problem arises. So generally, this kind of uh, like different continuous different functions they converges to function uh, like this. Okay, so they, so they goes to a function uh, where the function is uh, not uh, not generally uh, uh, differentiable. Okay, so that's the problem is so we can now say that uh, this norm, when I mean, this space equipped with this norm, is not a complete nonlinear space. Of course, this is a nonlinear space with this uh, special norm, but this is not complete. Means this is not Banach space. Okay, now the thing is that uh, what they think, I mean, the, what the mathematician basically think. Uh, that about some 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 norm which is basically continuous, uh, basically complete on this space. So what is that norm? We just write that. So this norm is very not that much very popular, but it is like easy to see. So we take kind of like like uh, like a system. Okay. So we take uh, kind of like system like this. That we take like this kind of norm. I call this one norm. Okay, so when uh, in dissertation my teacher asked me what is this norm, I didn't know the uh, name of the norm. It is basically called Sobolev norm, Sobolev norm, or Sobolev norm, and that is one. So I call it this is one norm. Okay, so that's what it is. So now you take the at first the sub norm of f x as x goes to this plus if you take the sub norm of, of uh, f dash x. Okay, so that is basically the two-fold method. So this method is for that C zero one, 
and this is for that C10. Okay. And if you take that anything like C201, then this norm can be extended. Okay. And I call this two norm. Okay. Like this. And you take like this that sup of uh, fx, f plus uh, sup of uh, f dash, and then plus uh, sup of f uh, double dash. Okay, and of course we know that the sup norm is be generally defined by that way also. Okay, that thing. That's uh, like basic thing, and this can be like this. Okay, you are taking the supreme of uh, the derivative, uh, the derived function. Okay, that's the thing is. And this norm is generally called the Sobolev norm. And this can not only on C1, C2, you can apply this on Cn01. And Cn means not complex functions, it is called the nth time differentiable functions, and after that it will be continuous. So that's it. That's it. Uh, that, that's the discussion that how, how and why some norms are complete and not incomplete, and the analysis of this space. It's, it, it's, it's a very special space. I mean, this is a very beautiful space. So thanks for watching.